Okay, so you've, you've looked at all the different categories, and if you see any of these that apply to you that you feel would be actually the best for you to come into the country and retire here, then you have to, there are requirements that you have to for, app, for applying for the SRV. So let's talk about the uh, requirements for the SRV program itself. So when, when you first start out, you're going to have to complete the SRV application. It's a form PRA RRSC. 2013-02. You can download it from the PRE website. You'll also need a valid passport with the valid arrival and entry visa into the Philippines. If you're applying under the the um, SRV courtesy and you are a former Filipino, you are going to need the uh, a birth certificate or an old Philippine pass passport. If you're using a birth certificate, it has to be the NSO, the National Statistics Office. A copy of the birth certificate. That's their official birth certificate uh, authentication. You're going to need a police clearance. Uh, the police clearance duly authenticated by the Philippine Embassy, consulate, if issued abroad, or NBI clearance if issued in the Philippines. So this is what I did, and it seemed to, it seemed to work really well for me. What I did was I, for my, myself and my wife, I went to uh, my state law enforcement division. I requested a uh, background investigation and I requested that it be notarized. It took mm, maybe three or four days. Uh, it was a minimal amount. I forgot how much we paid, twenty, thirty dollars or something like that. And then what you have to have, it has to be duly authenticated by the Philippine Embassy. So we took that notarized version of the background investigation and then we sent it to the Philippine Embassy in the in the US. Again, that was a minimal amount. I think I think that was maybe sixty dollars, give or take, uh, for for that application and the authentication of that document, and then they sent it back. And that took about another week. So give it around two weeks, and you can get your police clearance back. But the thing is, you have that the day that you arrive at the PRA when you submit your uh, your application package. You're going to need uh, twelve two by two passport photos. You're also going to need proof of relationship for joining dependents. Uh, if your wife's coming or children are coming, it's basically got to be a marriage certificate or a birth certificate. If you again, if you are uh, married and your and your spouse is coming over, you need and this document has been issued in a foreign country other than the Philippines. It's also going to have to be duly authenticated by the Philippine Embassy. So, so you can either do that at the Philippine Embassy in your home country or you can actually do it in the Philippine Embassy here. I recommend if you're doing the police clearance and you're getting it authenticated to the Philippine Embassy, you also submit you also submit the uh, any of the uh, the marriage certificates or birth certificates and have that duly authenticated at the same time. It will you're also going to need a medical examination. Uh, my recommendation, and I highly recommend this, is to wait till you get over here for the medical examination. It's very easy and it doesn't cost you anything. It's part of the uh, the application fee. So if uh, if you do do it back in your home country, you're going to need a DF, DFA medical examination form number 11. You can download that. And I believe that's also going to have to be authenticated because uh, anything that comes from out of the country has to be authenticated. Or you can wait till you get over here like we did. And and at the uh, PRA, they'll, issue, they'll give you a medical certificate, RSSC form number 002 and they will they will show you where to go and I'll explain that a little bit later on inside the uh, um, uh, the presentation and you just go there it takes about an hour you knock that out they sign the form and you're good to go and no cost uh, another one of the requirements for this RV is you have to have a requisite deposit into a PRA designated accredited bank and the amounts based on the category and we talked about that earlier so you will have to bring a letter of introduction to that uh, designated bank. The PRA will provide you with the, with the letter of introduction, and you'll take that down to the bank uh, that they um, recommend to you. And for if you're doing it in Makati, which is what we did at the main office, you just walk. It's about two buildings down. You walk to uh, the uh, BDO Bank, Bank de Aro. And uh, they'll give you the information, and you'll do the deposit there. The deposit will take about one to two days before it actually shows up, and they see it at the PRA. Now, the, 
the note at the very bottom says documents obtained issued outside the Philippines must be translated into English if necessary and authenticated by the Philippine Embassy Consulate. I uh, already went over the authentication. Uh, er everything has to be, anything that's out of the, the Philippines has to be authenticated by the Philippine Embassy Consulate. Why? I didn't talk at all about translations. So in my case, uh, I was actually married in Japan. My marriage certificate is in Japanese. So if you are have any documents that is not in English, it's going to have to be translated into English. You're going to have to have it notarized somehow. I had it notarized at the U.S. Embassy, and then I had it authenticated at the uh, the the, the um, Actually, it was mine was authenticated at the department, the Philippine Department of Foreign Affairs. The PRA told me that that's where I had to get that done. So it, you can either get it done, I believe, at the Philippine Embassy, or the uh, Philippine uh, Department of Foreign Affairs. Let's talk about the process. How do I go about doing this whole thing? I've got all my documents that I can possibly have. What do I need to do to start my process and apply for the SRP? So you're going to bring all your documents. To uh, down to the main PRA office in Makati or one of the satellite office. At the, at the end of the uh, presentation, I have some references for all of the satellite offices they have. I recommend if you can do it at Makati, it will be done, and you're trying to get it done as quick as possible, you want to do it at the main office. Uh, the processing time for the main office is 15 to 20 days. If you go to any of the 15 to 20 working days, so basically business business days. If you do any of your processing at any of the satellite offices, it's going to be 25 to 30 uh, working days. Um, that's what they say on their website. Now, a caveat is if you are doing any of this around a holiday such as Christmas or New Year's, take it from me, it's not going to be... 20 or 25 or 30 days, it's probably going to take a little bit longer because not a lot gets done around the Christmas holiday. Uh, case in point, we started ours on the 19th of December, so nothing got done between the 19th and about the 4th of January. So, once you bring in all your documents into the uh, PRA office and the staff in there review it, they'll let you know if you're missing anything or if there's anything you need to do before you actually go further. Once they determine that all the documents that you can do up to that point are all up, up to date and good. What they're going to do is that you're going to need your fit physical or your medical if needed, if you did not do it in your home country. All right. So if you, like I said, my recommendation is to do it there. It's free, doesn't cost you anything, and it's quick and painless. Um, what they're going to do is if you're doing from the Makati office, they'll refer you to the Sacred Heart Diagnostic Medical Center. It's maybe two kilometers if if that away from the uh, from the from the main office there you just hop into a taxi uh, tell them uh, this is where you want to go to I'll put it on uh, the information on the website uh, or on the on the video here and again there's no charge for the exam go inside they're gonna do a blood test they're gonna draw some blood you're gonna do uh, uh, your analysis they're gonna check some of your vitals you're gonna do an x-ray and then boom you're done one to two days and the report goes back to the PRA and that portion is completed and also if needed if you did not do your background investigation in your home country you're going to need an NBI clearance uh, and bring the clean documents to the PRA office uh, I when when I was actually doing my processing there was a gentleman behind me that said he couldn't figure out how to get a a uh, background investigation in his home country, I believe it was in the UK or something like that. And he, he came without it and they said, no problem, we'll assist you with getting your NBI clearance here. Uh, so uh, again, if you, you're unable to get your clearance back in your home country, you can do it there with the NBI clearance. Once, once all the documents have been reviewed and approved by the PRI staff, what they're going to do is they're going to give you a letter of introduction, LOI, and you're going to bring that to the PRI designated accredited bank. I spoke about this earlier. There's one bank that's, uh, if you're applying at the main office in Makati, and what you'll do is you'll just walk around the corner a couple blocks and you go inside there with the LOI. They know what it's for. You walk up to them and you're going to deposit money into the, uh, um, to the bank account, uh, the designated bank account. Now, the, uh, the, the bank will open the bank account and notify the PRA once a transaction is done. What I have to caution you is you need to you need to use a bank 
to bank transfer. You cannot use uh, cash going inside there. So make sure that you have the information uh, about your, your bank account uh, from your home bank. Uh, basically like your routing information, your bank bank account information. For your routing it's going to be something like your your SWIFT, SWIFT, your BIC, your SORT, or your routing number. You're going to need that. Uh, your, your name, routing number, and account number information. And you're going to use that when you actually set up your, your account at the designated bank. And once the PRA receives the remittance from the uh, requisite deposit, there's going to be a final review of all your submitted documentation. If everything's good, then you'll sign the final SRV application. The PRA will forward your package along with your passport to the BI for completion of the SRV. It's going to set up in the Bureau of Investigation probably for about, I'm, I'm going to guess around uh, uh, 8 to 10 days, something like that. That's about how ours went. Um, while you are gone, uh, uh, when you leave, of course, you're going to be leaving without your passport. So what they're going to do is they're going to make a, make a photocopy of your passport and they are going to put a PRA stamp inside there. So if you need to have some type of identification for doing anything else in the Philippines uh, and you want to have your passport information, you can use that copy of the, uh, uh, from, from your passport. Again, the expected waiting time for completion of the of the package is going to be around you know, 20 days, 15 to 20 days. They advertise at the main site, 25 to 30 days at any of the satellite offices. Next, the PRA is going to monitor the progress of your package at the Bureau of Immigration. Once the uh, PRA receives your passport and the, with the SRV inside, and the PRA. SRRV identity card, it's going to go to their processing office. Folks inside there are so helpful. Uh, from my experience, I had to call them up a couple of times and, and they gave me a lot of good information and uh, told us what day to come down and actually pick up our, 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 uh, our visa and our uh, uh, SRRV identity card. The, the PRA processing office is going to complete the affirmation of membership certificate basically which establishes your guidelines and rights as a member uh, of the PRA under the SRRV program. Next thing, you'll be notified when you come back to the PRA office and uh, by the processing office, and you'll be sworn in and you'll receive your passport with the SRRV included, the SRV identity card, and the authenticated affirmation of membership certificate. Now, what you don't see on the website and what nobody really tells you anywhere that I could see is you're going to be charged uh, uh, 2,390 pesos, which is around $50, when you pick up your passport and SRRV ID card. It's some sort of processing uh, fee that they have at the very end. So, I've got some helpful references at the end, uh, the, P the, uh, the PRA office locations, uh, some information about how to pay uh, your annual fee, your PRA annual fee, uh, without having to travel to the, to the uh, PRA office. And I got some online web ref references. So I hope this was helpful information for those of you who are thinking about retiring in the Philippines and considering the SRRV uh, options here. Uh, if, this, if, if, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to uh, uh, ask the questions inside the forum or put it uh, in a private message. And, and as long as I have internet, I will reply back to you as uh, quick as I possibly can. And uh, if you enjoyed today's video and you found it helpful, uh, please like, uh, please share, and uh, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Uh, I have a lot of good information I hope uh, uh, that will be helpful to you uh, in my upcoming videos. Uh, take care, and we'll see you next time.